Did y'all notice that Sue Storm's hair color changed throughout the entire movie? Hey y'all, welcome back. My name is Sarah and I love to talk about movies. Woo, Fantastic Four. So I have seen the ones from the early 2000s with uh, Jessica Alba and that guy and that other guy and uh, Chris Evans. This came out a few years ago, I think like 2015, something like that. The people were very excited. Fantastic Four is not like my favorite superhero group, but I understand, I understand the enthusiasm. The casting was random. Miles Teller, Michael B. Jordan, Kate Mara, and Jamie Bell. Truly a random collection, and that may have been on purpose, you know. So the story starts when Reed and Ben are kids, and Reed is trying to experiment with teleportation. And he ends up like uh, blowing out the power for the whole city, and that's how they become fast friends. Sure, sure. We don't know where Reed's parents are, we know that Ben grew up in a broken home that owned a dump. That, I guess, was supposed to fill out most of his character. He doesn't really talk a lot, and I guess that's supposed to really reinforce that whole thing character. Like I said, Reed, we never meet his parents. We don't know where he lives. We don't know what kind of childhood he had growing up. Other than being a little socially awkward, next thing you know, we're jumping to high school where there's like a science fair and they bring the device to show <laughs> that the teleportation device works. They show it, it works, and the teachers think that it's a prank, that it's a light show. And I'm like, do they look like magicians to you? That kid has been talking about creating a teleportation machine since he was a little kid. And I don't know if it was like the papers flying at the same time, the wind kicking up or whatever, but I'm like, were you looking at it directly with your eyes? Because that didn't make no sense to me. Maybe the teacher didn't like him, that's a possibility because I could see him getting on teacher's nerves. Anyway, so he's recruited then and there by a, I guess it's supposed to be like a research think tank agency, seemingly without governmental ties, recruit him to build a bigger one, basically. Don't say what his title is, really. They kind of say what he does, but not really his title, um, or if he's earning any money. I don't think so. I think he lives, he's supposed to live and work there. He has no other friends other than Ben. So before they get started, Dr. Franklin, who runs the whole thing, Sue and Johnny's father, and Victor's, I guess, as a like adopted son, he's taken under his wing, onto the project as well. And Victor clearly has eyes for Sue. Now, let me tell you what I don't understand. Dr. Franklin is a scientist. Even I could see that Victor was unstable and had a, a rather nihilistic point of view. And I would never have allowed him within 10 feet of this thing. It's that it puts the entire project and people at risk to have somebody like that who's done the things that he's done on the team. So they work for what looks like a couple of months together uh, to get this thing built and tested. They test it on a living animal. The animal goes out somewhere, comes back safely, hurrah! And then, um, unfortunately, they get the bright idea as scientists. This is what I'm talking about when you have younger characters, them teenage hormones, them 20-somethings hormones as an excuse for character behavior, they decide to test out the transporter on a human being themselves. The lead scientists on this project, the ones that made this happen, decided to put themselves at risk and go through this transporter. And they get there fine. Victor, on the other hand, has a moment where he sort of seems to have forgotten where he is and there's like some kind of an earthquake or something and they have to get back. And unfortunately, the intelligence, their IQ, I guess, dropped when they arrived. And they realized that they, in order to transport back, they have to be in the same position. And the earthquake made that very difficult. So there was an accident and all of them were exposed to 
different things that changed their bodies in different ways. And Victor ended up um, disappearing into some like glowing greenish yellow light. Kind of like that thing from Stranger Things where he's in that alternate dimension, kind of like that. So they come back, everybody is messed up. There's a huge explosion. The whole transporter is destroyed. The lab is destroyed. Uh, John is on fire. Uh, Sue is, is disappearing and reappearing and Reed's body, they don't really explain it, but he stretches without realizing it. And apparently it's extremely painful for him. All of them are taken to another, a government facility where they're observed. Reed wakes up, figures out a way, right away, to figures out a way to control his body enough to escape, you know, promises to come back for his friend and then manages to get out and escape, which Reed is not a survivalist, so I don't know how that happened. Is it his abilities that gave him the extra edge to make it to a whole other country and survive? <sighs> Cut to a smooth year later, they got Ben out there hulking for the military. They got Johnny on his way to being out there. He has much better control over his powers. They have suits made for them. Sue can levitate and make herself disappear and create shields for herself. Got that wig. <laughs> Reed is living off the grid, trying to find a way to fix whatever happened to them. And they built another machine in that same year. They go back, Victor's there, they bring him back. Victor's lost his mind out there using the energy of the planet or whatever to destroy the lab so that they can't come back. So they have to work together to prevent the earth from being absorbed. And they do because they're Fantastic Four. Did y'all notice that Sue Storm's hair color changed throughout the entire movie? And I don't mean like in a Kiernan Shipka playing Sabrina in The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina the Teenage Witch kind of way where she got powerful and her hair changed color. I mean in a Rudy, super grown out in one scene and then it comes back later on in the movie and then it changes again and then it changes again and that wig, that whitish blondish wig they had her in was not good at all. It looked like what it was, which was a wig. And I'm like, how do we jump to that from this like yellow blonde, super grown out hair color? It was weird and noticeable and made me feel like I could figure out the sequence in which scenes were filmed. They saved the world, la la la. Let's get into the characters. Ben doesn't say much, he's the thing. He was the thing before he was the thing. Doesn't talk a lot about what his goals were. He you know, worries about being left behind because his friend is so smart and it's taken him away. But what were his personal goals? He didn't have any. He's just kind of moving through life silently. <laughs> um, Johnny got problems because he is taking huge risks doing drag racing and whatnot you know building the car was cool but they never really focus on that for him you know they never really showed other things he was building or designing or doing that showed his aptitude for science and it was just about trying to get his father's attention sue was getting his father's attention just by working and doing the things. But what was her goal? We have no idea. We know that she laughs occasionally. It was so weird. It's not like they're spending personal time with each other outside of the lab, getting to know each other, like creating these personal bonds. It's all happening within the confines of this lab and only over what looks like a couple of months. But I digress, Reed is not a leader. Reed is a, a scientist man in this version. He's very focused on the work and proving his theories. This movie is a smooth hour and a half. So if you're looking for something within that window, sure. It has the action sequences, some science fiction stuff, um, a little heartfelt 
little drama rama there because clearly Reed has a crush on Sue. I'm like, she's the only woman there who is, you know, who is of a relatable age in a relatable situation. Who else is there? Nobody else is there. <laughs> it's just them. Her character is very wooden. Sue is also very into her work and has a role there. Everybody is highly intelligent, but they also have no friends and no other personal connections outside of that lab. And I'm assuming that everybody at this point is all around the same age, so between like 17 to 20. So that was weird. No sports, no teams, no organizations, no other personal goals other than this project, which I can see it being a major one because, hey, we made people, we could teleport people. That's huge. I would give Fantastic Four a two out of five. I would. The costume design I didn't have an issue with. The way that the powers manifested is is pretty close to like the other movies. Dr. Von Doom's costume was a bit underwhelming. He looked creepy, but not really like showing me something to be afraid afraid of. Johnny's power is terrifying. Like Ben's being the thing, that's big. Reed being able to stretch himself was comical, especially in this context because Stretching is painful for him and he can only do it slowly or really awkwardly. Them focusing on his intelligence was a, a good, good idea. It was difficult to try to picture what happens beyond that moment. <laughs> and I think that's where they messed up. It's like once you finish saving the world and whatnot, you're gonna be the Fantastic Four. What resources do you have access to? Do your parents think that you're all dead? Like Ben and Reed, where are your parents? Like, don't they care? Are they worried? We don't know. It, it kind of like reminds me of those older superhero movies where things should just naturally fall into place because they're all superheroes and they have powers and are highly intelligent. So they should just be able to work it out, right? I'm not a fan of that. You know, it's pretty simple, straightforward, very neat and easy. The only thing that really bothered me throughout the entire movie was Sue Storm's hair because it did not match the scenes that we see later on because her hair color keeps changing. It keeps going back and forward. But that's like a personal pet peeve of mine. Please let me know what you guys thought of this movie. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for spending your time here with me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time.